Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm in Southern California today. I'm talking to you right now from the town of Santa Barbara, which is a little bit north of Los Angeles, right on the Pacific Ocean. I'm out here for a family wedding that took place a couple of days ago. So this is a family trip, not a work trip. And then yesterday I came up here with my wife and my sister and my brother-in-law, and my brother-in-law is also a birder. So we're spending a couple of extra days on beyond the wedding and we'll do a little sightseeing and a little bit of birding. So the wedding took place in the town of Brea, which is really a suburb of Los Angeles on the east side of Los Angeles. We were able to make one quick birding stop there, which I'll get to at some point in the video because that was kind of nice. We got a lifer there. But then yesterday what we did is we drove up the Pacific Coast Highway a couple of hours from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara. And we made one really nice birding stop along the way in Malibu. So I think the birding location is called Malibu Lagoon and State Beach or something like that. So I'll put up a map of that hotspot on, on the screen so you can see it. But uh, that was a really productive one. And of course, eBird had showed us that that was a really good hotspot. So um, I didn't have the chance to film uh, myself talking while I was there. It was very crowded and we had limited time. So I just focused on the birds, but we got some good ones. So I'm going to go to that one and we'll do voiceover for that one as I show the birds and then we'll come back here. So Malibu Lagoon is located right off the Pacific Coast Highway between LA and Santa Barbara. The main attraction from a birding perspective is the lagoon itself, which provides good habitat for a variety of waterfowl and shorebirds. It was the middle of the day and fairly crowded, but we were still optimistic based on the positive eBird reports we had seen. As we walked south from the parking area around the west side of the lagoon, we could see a variety of ducks and other water birds in the lagoon, including this nice close-up view of a gadwall. We also saw this pied-billed grebe, which had just caught a nice meal. Our main target here was shorebirds, however, and with limited time for this stop, we continued on toward the beach and the ocean. As we walked onto the beach, we were a little confused as to where the shorebirds would be, as we hadn't seen any and we hadn't really seen any appropriate habitat so far. I was a little worried that this is one of those spots where you need to arrive really early before it gets crowded. But as we continued around, we realized that many shorebirds were actually roosting along the southern side of the lagoon. There were even some ropes and stakes in that area to keep people from getting too close. The first shorebirds we saw were some black-bellied plovers in their drab, non-breeding plumage. This was my first addition to the channel life list, which is the number in the lower right corner of the screen. We then spotted some larger and showier looking shorebirds in the form of these wimbrels. They have an impressively large and curved bill, although it wasn't quite as large as the bill on the bird we were targeting. Shortly after that, we saw this big flock of resting sanderlings. They are normally seen running up and down the beach like crazy, following the waves in and out, so it was a little bit funny to see them just chilling out on the beach. And then we spotted our number one target, a long-billed curlew. This is the largest shorebird in North America. The huge bill is a marvel of specialized evolution, letting it probe more deeply into the ground for food than any of its competitors. So with this amazing bird on our list, we were able to relax a bit and we kept noticing more and more shorebird species. This marbled godwit was another nice find, and it was fun to watch it feeding on insects directly off of this plant. That's a wimbrel standing directly behind it.
I was quite happy when I spotted this snowy plover, which was difficult to see against the sand. This is one of the more uncommon regular shorebirds in North America, and I hadn't seen one for almost 15 years, making it one of the stalest birds on my life list. These ruddy turnstones were also blending in pretty well against the mottled sand. With time running low, we walked south across the beach to the ocean, where we could see a large number of gulls congregating. In this rocky area of beach, we quickly picked up some additional species. The California gull looks a lot like a ring-billed gull, but it has distinctive red and black spots on the bill. A few royal terns were also with the gulls. We were actually hoping for some other possible tern species, such as elegant tern or Forster's tern, but no luck this time. Western gulls were probably the most numerous gull at this location. The most interesting gull for me was the Hearman's gull, which I always enjoy seeing when I'm on the west coast. They're one of the few gulls with an all-dark plumage rather than having a white breast, which makes them pretty distinctive. This one here is an immature with a light-colored bill. And this one is a non-breeding adult with a dark red bill. Definitely a cool looking gull. As we passed by the lagoon again on our way out, we got good looks at this American widgeon. Kind of an unusual looking duck with a white patch on the head. That's an American coot that it's hanging out with. We also saw and heard this singing white crowned sparrow. There were plenty of ruddy ducks in the lagoon as well, which I didn't get a chance to video. Okay, so I'm back here on the beach in Santa Barbara. That was a really amazing stop. All those shorebirds were packed in along that lagoon there and they kind of had it roped off there so you, people couldn't get too close and disturb them, but you could just walk on the beach and film them. I think that long-billed curlew has to be my favorite shorebird of all with that amazingly long bill. I remember the first time I saw that, you know, got it as a lifer. I think it was in Texas several years ago. And I was just so excited when I saw that bird walking on the beach you know, you see it in the bird guide you know you just can't believe that the bird actually has a bill that long and you see it in real life and it really is that that big uh, so what, what a great bird for my brother-in-law john the uh, long-billed curlew and the marbled godwit were lifers so he picked up two lifers on that stop so we were pretty pumped after that one but next what i want to do is backtrack a little bit to two days ago the day of the wedding we actually had a little time in the morning to kill um, and so my brother-in-law and i went to a regional park, just about five minute drive from the hotel, where we had a target species to look for that would be a lifer for both of us. And that is a pintailed wida, which is obviously an introduced species to, uh, to the United States, to California, but it's pretty well established here. It's native to Africa. And what's great about this bird is it has this amazingly long tail. So I'm gonna go to that, we'll do some voiceover. And uh, you will see, I won't uh, keep the suspense, that we were successful in finding that uh, pintailed white, and I got it on film. So that was another fun stop, even though we were only there for like uh, 45 minutes to an hour. So the name of this location is Craig Regional Park, and it's in the east suburbs of Los Angeles. It is an eBird hotspot, of course. The park is sort of long and skinny with a small pond in the middle, and it has a lot of open grassy areas. 
One of the first birds we saw when we arrived was this black phoebe, which is a common and conspicuous species in Southern California. You can see them on a wide variety of habitats, including yards and parks. As we walked into the northern part of the park, we spotted these western meadowlarks walking around on the infield of a baseball diamond. A nice species to see. I managed to get one pretty good photo as well. Also near the same baseball field, we got our first good looks at scaly-breasted munya, which is an introduced exotic species native to Asia. It's pretty common in Southern California. They're an attractive little bird that's often sold in pet stores under the name spice finch. The little pond in the center of the park was, of course, a good place to pick up some birds, including this pied-billed grebe. A large tree next to the pond was hiding a juvenile black-crowned night heron. And the same tree also had a more cooperative green heron that was showing very well. I see green herons regularly back home on my home patch, but I always enjoy getting a close-up look at this beautiful species. We also came across a small flock of bush tits in some reeds next to the pond. This is one of those high energy birds that never stops moving. I didn't really have time to try to get them on video, so I just set my shutter speed really high and fired away. And ended up with some photos that I'm quite happy with. This flock of American coots also reminded me of my home patch, which always has a big flock of coots in the wintertime. Here's another one of several black phoebes we saw in this visit. We also saw another Western specialty, a Say's phoebe. So, as you can see on the screen, this is species number 200 for the channel life list. A nice milestone to hit, and I'm hoping to grow that number considerably in the future. In case you're wondering, I started making YouTube videos regularly back in March of 2024. We were seeing and hearing yellow rump warblers all over this park, but this was the best chance I had of filming one. Nothing like seeing a bird and its beautiful natural surroundings. At this point, we had completed a loop of the park and we were almost back to the car, so it was looking like we were going to miss our target bird, the pin-tailed whyta. I was photographing this western bluebird and I was just about to start taking some video of it when John called out that he had seen a whyta fly into some trees nearby. I forgot all about the bluebird and we quickly relocated this male whyta feeding on the ground. Turns out that this species is not at all shy, and we ended up getting great looks. John and I were standing about 20 feet apart, and at one point this bird flew directly between us. Pintailed whitas are native to Africa, and they're not quite as common or well-established in Southern California as the Munyas, but they are considered countable. They are also here because of the pet trade. These whitas are nest parasites, meaning that they lay their eggs in other birds' nests and let the other birds raise their young. This is something that cuckoos and cowbirds also do. Interestingly, it turns out that in Southern California, the whitas choose scaly-breasted munyas as their main victim of this scheme. That's a bird I showed a few minutes ago from this same location. So one introduced bird is taking advantage of another introduced bird. 
it's always great to get a really good look at a bird when you're seeing it for the first time, so you don't have to make that difficult decision about whether you saw it well enough to add it to your life list.